Hey guys, Buildzoid here, and so today we're going to be doing the B550 MSI motherboard uh, first impressions. Um, this still doesn't look like a complete motherboard lineup to me. Like, where's the really cheap ugly boards? Like the boards where I'm like, you don't touch this with a 10-foot pole. Where are those? Did they split up their motherboard professional motherboards there we go let's go let's go see if there's like b550 professional motherboards that aren't in the gaming list huh no there aren't interesting oh well we've only got eight boards so hopefully this video will be kind of short now i'm more uh, now i'm going to be using newegg for for prices because generally they're pretty good about having correct uh msrps at least for things that are shipped by newegg and not by some third part like third party that's selling through newegg um but uh, yeah, so I gotta say I'm surprised that MSI actually has the the reason mo like their top board for B550 is not as ridiculously priced as some of the others. Um, and I mean it's still not a cheap board, but hey, let's see. So we're we're obviously going from most expensive to least expensive. So let's see what they they can what MSI is capable of doing for two hundred and twenty dollars. Also, I'm shooting this video after all of the other B550 motherboard, uh, vid like, like just ramble throughs, you know, first impressions that I've done. So, um, you could call it reaction video if you wanted to. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, like, with the, like, basically what I'm trying to get at is with these, I actually have a bet, the best idea of what the competition is at the various price points. So... Let's see, um, aluminum cover, all metal extended. Yeah, this works really well. Like the having the entire rear IO cover just be one giant chunk of metal makes the VRM, like it basically just gives the VRM so much surface area. Not because there's like a lot of fins cut into it, but because it's just bloody huge. Like, you know, uh, like if you have enough volume, you're gonna have a lot of surface area just because there's a lot of volume. Um, seven watt, uh, thermal pads. That's neat. Um, power solution. 12 plus two plus one phase power design. Oh man, this is so cool. Man, I, I, this is so cool. TDA2, oh my god. Oh, this is, like, this is a beast of a VRM. TDA2 on 462s? In a freaking, like... Yeah, wait, is it six phase, 35, wait. Yeah, so they're uh, 3599s. They didn't finish the part number. Anyway, yeah, but 3599 doublers, 60 amp power stages. And those are smart power stages. Like TDA21462s are good. So, yeah, like they're, they're not your, like, well, 60, like, it's funny. Like once you hit, like, there's a really big, like, performance gap between certain current ratings. And then there's much less of a performance gap between other current ratings. And then there's, like, 50, and then there's 50 amp power stages where they're just kind of all over the place. But, yeah, the 60 amp smart power stages are, like, really good. Like for a long time, they were the best thing you could get. And it's only relatively recently that we started seeing, like, 70s and 90s. And the 90s aren't really, an, like, 90s aren't even a very significant improvement over the 70s. Um, yeah, the, the 60s are already very good. So, let's see. Um, heat sinks look like they have a lot of surface area, though I kind of doubt that they'll need it considering what's hiding under them. Like, that is one really nice VRM, um, right, with the IR3520 on, like, I'm impressed. Um, let's see, I, I want to see what kind of memory speeds MSI is saying they'll support. One DIMM, one rank, one DIMM per channel, one rank, they're going to do 4866. That's, for a daisy chain, that's solid. Though, surprisingly enough, Gigabyte is claiming support for even higher speeds, so that, like, that'll be, like, that'll be interesting to test, definitely. Um, one DIMM, dual rank, that's low. Four dims. Okay, so that is really that is surprising. I would have expected somewhat higher speeds across the like for for the higher density configurations. I was kind of expecting somewhat higher speeds, but and it's not like any of this will significant. Well, if you're running you know four by sixteen or four by thirty two, then yeah, you're not really going to have a lot of speed. But you generally don't get a lot of speed if you're going for extra high densities. So. 
that's not too surprising. Um, rear I/O looks solid. Two and a half gig, you know, two and a half gig real tech, Wi-Fi six, BIOS flashback, seven USB ports, display outputs. If you're going to use an APU, though, putting an AP, well, actually, the forty seven hundred G on on this would be pretty cool, right? So there's no postcode, is there? Oh, uh, that that's that's a shame. There is no postcode. There's some buttons down at the bottom. What are those buttons for? I'm very interested in those buttons. I'm gonna guess one of them is like clear CMOS or something. Wait, the No, I want to okay. Um Tell me what the buttons are. <laughs> Why do you who cares about all this crap? I want to know what the buttons do. There's a switch and a button. I must know. Because <laughs> I think they have a... Yeah, there's a BIOS flashback in the rear I.O. So what on earth is that extra button on the on the board itself? Can we zoom? Oh, there's not enough pixels. Oh, I'm assuming one of them is a LED off switch and the other one I have... Like, so LED off switch, that's standard on a lot of MSI boards, but the other button I have no, the, well, the actual button, not the switch, I have no idea what that is. That's kind of interesting. We've got troubleshooting LEDs, assumingly not, I assume not color coded and they're right next to each other. So those are going to be a nightmare to tell what, what's, what exactly is wrong. So that's great. <laughs> um, so not the most expensive flagship B550 motherboard, solid VRM. Memory overclocking is uh, interesting. Wait a minute, they're doing, so they should be able to do a four phase SOC VRM as well. Wait a minute, Wait, one. No, that's gonna be part V core. So two phase SOC and then two phase, I mean, two phases of V core up there. Yeah, cause the, the capacitor bank also seems to in support that theory. I am not counting wrong. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah. Um, I think this might be the best VRM for the price point, but at the same time, it's like B five like the Ryzen is not that overclocking friendly. So <laughs> like the CPU isn't that overclocking friendly. So my focus would generally be like memory support not uh like good memory overclocking less so about uh great uh great like great cpu power delivery just because even like even the 3950x isn't really that power hungry compared even to something like a 10900k right like and you need to be really trying to make it to, to make a 3950x compete with a 10900k whereas with the 10900k it's quite easy to make it pull absolutely stupid amounts of power so, yeah, I'm not see like the board doesn't really do anything wrong. Um, I'm guessing you get two PCIe slots that actually support SLI, right? Or let's check. Does this do SLI? Oh, there's no SLI support on this. Oh, so I'm guessing, oh, the second 16x slot is off of the chipset. Yeah, so this is like only for single GPU. So, I don't know, like there's not, I, I don't see anything wrong with the board, except it's like, it doesn't really offer that many features in my opinion. It's, but, you know, not, like build quality is nice, but yeah, I'm not sure that I would like recommend this board to a, but like, like, well, the thing is, I'm assuming MSI uses the same memory topology off of this on a bunch of their other boards. And so it's just like, and I'm assuming like this has the best VRM, but with a lot of the other ones, you get a good enough VRM anyway. So it's just like, yeah, why would, why exactly would you go for that instead? Um, so what do we have next? I do have this by price, but this is already out of stock, which makes perfect sense. That's $180. Do they seriously? No, Gaming Edge Wi-Fi, 190. Okay, so let's check out the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi. Because I want to go from most expensive to least expensive. I, I, I like to see, like, what, what, what's getting cut off. Um, this looks like the same memory topology. We still have the massive VRM heatsink. 
do we have the same VRM? No. Okay, so this one they're not showing off the VRM configuration as much, which is like, wait a minute, or maybe I just scrolled over it without noticing. No, I didn't just scroll over it. Like, they're literally just not advertising it as hard. Okay. Well, that's a bit... Wait, no. I did scroll over it. So, 10 plus 2 duet rail power system. Right. So, that's the 10 power stages, 5 phases. But that works fine, honestly. Like, there's not really... Like, it just means you need... Potentially need more input filtering. Um, and 5 phases is already a relatively high phase count anyway. Um... It's interesting that they advertise having support for load line calibration, which is good. Like, there are a lot of low-end boards that don't have low load line calibration, so that's actually... Tech. Fun funnily, like, I, I think that's not necessarily something you should need to advertise, but honestly, it is actually a good idea, idea to, to specify, hey, yes, we do support that. Um, so... Yeah, the, the thing is... Um, 60 amp power stages. I'm assuming this is an intercell design. And even then, it's like, I'm going to assume that this is on the 99 360s. And, like, this should still be a very capable VRM. Like, even with a 3950X, I wouldn't see it. Like, I, I couldn't see this overheating. Especially with that heatsink. <laughs> like, that is a lot of surface area on there. So... Yeah, this, uh, this looks like a really solid board um, for 100, and, and of course it's out of stock. <laughs> like everything that's solid and, and kind of reasonably priced, out of stock. But yeah, that is, that is a solid board. You get Wi-Fi. I mean, this one I think makes a lot more sense than the Carbon, simply because the Carbon, like, what are the differences between this and the Carbon? There's not that many as far as I can tell, right? Like rear I.O., you get Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gig real tech. Um, less USB ports, or am I imagining? Ah, uh, yes, less USB ports. Okay, so that that is the downside. You lose a bunch of you. You lose a pair of USB ports on the rear I/O. But do you gain anything internally? Because there are some boards where it's like you lose a bunch on the rear I/O, but they give you an extra internal header. But that's the three point two over there. That's the three point zero down there. 3.0 down there. No, same, very similar. You get a 1x slot extra, and I guess the audio cover thing, whereas there's no cover here. Different capacitor configuration for the audio. Though I, I don't pay attention to audio sections enough to be able to judge any hardware design, like hardware decisions there. So yeah, it's just kind of like, oh, I can see that that changed. <laughs> Can't really tell you if it means anything. Um... Oh, wait, I think the... No, they are the same capacitors, aren't they? Oh, these are all black, whereas these are silver on the side. Okay, I guess maybe these are 5,000 hours instead of 10,000 hours, but that doesn't really make much of a difference anyway, so... Like, not like I care. So... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure why you would go for the carbon because it looks way too similar to the to the gaming edge to justify the price hike, in my opinion. Like, I'm just going to go through the specs as well, just in case, but I'm assuming for... Wait a minute, what? Why does this support up to 5100 and this only do 4866? I'm guessing maybe their specification pages might be a little bit behind as well. Like, that's always a possibility, is that this isn't as up-to-date as you would like it to be, and so this is like, yeah, we do 5100 on this one, but we don't do 5100 on this one, even though I'm pretty, I'd be very surprised if the memory topology on these two is not the same thing. So, yeah. Also, they, they removed, I think, yeah, they removed one MOSFET from the memory VRM, not that, like, one high-side MOSFET, so that does even, like, if it was one low-side, that, that's, somewhat more significant but one low high side mosfet yeah that doesn't really do anything um these are so similar oh i guess they removed the extra four pin power connector but you don't need that anyway so that doesn't do anything um no this is a solid board and i'm not sure what the carbon like what, what the carbon is trying to do i would though not a fan of the rear io like this this number of usb ports is honestly 
like i'm very much not a fan of that but you know there's no, like a lot of people don't need as many usb ports as i do and i can totally understand that so if you don't care about the fact that in my opinion that doesn't have a lot of usb ports it's a perfectly good board um whereas the carbon is kind of like i'm not sure why you would get the carbon instead unless uh no this is wi-fi 6 as well like this the, I, I don't know why i keep thinking that there's some major difference there isn't like just get the gaming edge wi-fi instead tomahawk let's see what they did for this one um we still actually is this the same vrm heatsink oh no it's slightly different same power the same vrm looks like yeah still on the 60 amp power stages so you still get the same vrm like msi really needs to figure out how to split up their like product stack because these boards are too damn similar in my opinion oh this one drops the wi-fi okay that's what they, they did so this one doesn't have the wi-fi and it is a hundred ten dollars less for no wi-fi six okay um and then it's the same board as far as i can tell right like if we go to the gallery they they also got rid of the 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 um cut out into the pcb but other than that yeah these are the same board <laughs> that is those are so extremely similar that is ridiculous yeah same board <laughs> So these are the same thing. One is $10 cheaper and you give up the Wi-Fi. And I'm assuming... Actually, no, you get one gig... Man, but we... Why not more USB ports, guys? <laughs> I'd, I'd, more USB ports, please. Even if they're just 2.0, just more. Um, but yeah, this this is actually like... That's a really cool, though, networking. So like the, the dual LAN, like if you're looking for dual LAN, this is actually a really cool option. And you still get, like, solid power delivery and everything. And I'm assuming memory specs on this are uh, 48... Or maybe they do have different... Well, like, technically speaking, that cutout does mean that this is a pretty different PCB. As in, like, it's literally not the same. But not exactly the same. But... Like, I'd assume they copy-pasted the memory topology around. Like, this obviously, like, that we still have the same, like, you can't see any of the memory traces in the, in the memory section, so I'm assuming, like, this looks like the same sh shielded daisy chain on both boards. So, yeah, I'm not, like, I, like, either way, though, 4866 is not even a speed that you really care about on Ryzen anyway, so, not really a big deal. But yeah, so the Tomahawk definitely looks like a solid board, and at the price, um, looks like a, like, well, actually, the fact, like, depending on what you want, like, if you want more USB ports, I think there's better options, and I think around this price range, you can also technically get a board with a postcode from ASRock, um, but, uh, yeah, if you just want dual LAN, this is actually really cool, VRM is solid, memory support seems to, should be solid as well, like, it's, it's a solid little, you know, like, most of the B550 boards are, like, th this is a real ch problem with B550 for me, is, like, a lot of these boards just don't do anything particularly wrong for me to complain about. Uh, well, you know, duet rail power system is just, like, they're putting the power stages in parallel. That's that's all that is. Um, anyway, um, so they're doing the Asus thing where you actually have a relatively low phase count. Oh, I forgot to talk about the ITX board. I'm such an idiot. Let's talk about the ITX board. It has a fan. I'm not sure what the fan is for. I am very confused. It might be for VRM cool. I don't see a heat pipe. That's not for VRM cooling. What is that meant to cool? Your M.2 SSD? Really? Um, also, the memory support on this thing looks terrible. What the hell? Now I'm very confused. Like, normally I'd expect an ITX board from MSI to have, like, the, the by far the highest me high-speed memory support. And it looks like with this one they just kind of, like... Well, I mean, on Ryzen at the same time it just kind of doesn't matter, right? As soon as you can hit 4,000 reliably, it's like, who cares going past that? Because, like, once you've maxed out the Infinity Fabric, any extra speed doesn't, doesn't do anything for you. But, uh... 
And I'm still surprised that it's not better in terms of memory. Ooh, yay, SMD aluminum polymers for the, the V-Core VRM. Big fan of that, of course. Um, I'm very confused about the fan. Like, what is that for? Like, it can't be cooling the chipset. B550 doesn't need a fan. Or at least it shouldn't need a fan. Um... Rear I.O. on this, you know, ITX rear I.O., there's not much of it. Flashback button, Wi-Fi 6, 2.5 gig real tech. Um, I don't know. I think for, for your $200 ITX board, where do they have the power delivery? There we go. Power solution. 8 plus 2. Okay. And 60 amp. What the hell are those? I have never seen those power stages before. Those are very... Like, the sh that is a very funky shaped power. Like, that is... I I'm assuming that's a 4 by 6 millimeter. So, yeah, th that's... Like, that's not a completely, like, unique package. But it's not a common one. Oh, they managed to squeeze debug LEDs onto the board. That's nice. Um, man, that SOC VR <laughs> inductors. Oh boy. But uh, okay, so that actually looks like a really solid VRM for an ITX board. Um, or well, really solid, solid enough, I guess. Like it's not the worst ITX uh, VRM you can get on B five fifty. At the same time, it's a two hundred dollar board and. Like, the X570, like, how much was the X570, wait, no, but this is an eight phase, this is eight phases versus, is it eight, or, yeah, no, it's straight up eight phases, so, hmm, yeah, so, okay, so this is, a, like, so power delivery for an ITX board solid. Um, I'm just, like, trying to, like, I'm not sure. Like, the thing is, I still think it's a little bit on the expensive side, but I am don't, like, I'm not necessarily certain that you'd have a better ITX option anyway. Though the fan is still, like, what is the fan for? I'm assuming it's just for the... For the... For the M.2 SSD. Because, like, the chipset does, isn't supposed to need cooling. So, yeah, this board... Like, a lot of the B550 ITX options are kind of, like, too expensive to make a lot of sense compared to their X570 counterparts. And MSI obviously didn't make an X570 ITX board because it doesn't make sense to make an X570 ITX board. Like, the whole point of the X570 chipset is that you get a bunch of PCIe 4.0 coming off of the chipset. And it's like, well, where's that going to go on your ITX board, right? Nowhere, because you've got one PCIe slot. Um, but, uh, like, you just can't do much with that. But um yeah, so this is a this is a strange little board in my opinion. Like I'm really not sure what 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 to to think of it right now. Even though it's like the last board I'm seeing for B550, like one of the last boards I'm seeing for B550, it's just like I I'd have to really like take every single ITX board and then compare them directly against each other cuz like like, I don't, the by, so the one I like by far the least is the Asus one. That one has mean the most, like, why wouldn't you just get the X570 version instead? But uh, this one is like, well, there isn't an X570 version, and it is $200. But I think there's another board at $200 that might be slightly better in some way, and then it's like, well, get that instead, maybe. But yeah, so I, I need to, like, so I'm not too sure about that, but it doesn't look like they're, like, it doesn't look like there's anything particularly wrong. It's just like, I'm not sure that it's optimal. And the price is a bit high. That's the main thing. Um, 
So now we get to move on to the MIT exports. So the mortars. Um, they have a mortar Wi-Fi. They have a mortar non-Wi-Fi. Let's look at the non-Wi-Fi version because honestly, I don't really care for the Wi-Fi. It's self-explanatory. You get Wi-Fi, right? <laughs> oh, that's cute. They managed to squeeze an SOCVRM onto the an SOCVRM heatsink onto this. Um. Yeah, that, that, like, a lot of the B450 MSI boards wouldn't have an SOCVRM heatsink because they just couldn't fit one up there. Instead, they decided to, like, put the MOSFETs really far away from each other, which in theory should help thermals quite a bit, but obviously having an actual heatsink is going to be better. So that's neat that they managed to squeeze that on there. Power solution. Duet rail. So this is going to be a 4 plus 2, yeah, 4 plus 2 phase. Um, 60 amp power stages, man, I'm, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the fact that they're managing to squeeze 60 amp power stages absolutely everywhere. Um, so this should still, especially considering that MSI likes these gigantic heat sinks, like this should work really well. Um, So let's see how the memory support is. I'm assuming this is, wait, only 4,400 detail. 4,400. Oh, I guess this is on a four-layer PCB. Uh, I was kind of hoping that there'd be, oh, no, you can kind of see there's, yeah, so you have that little window over down, down there. And I'm pretty sure that correlates directly to how many layers the board has. Um, I mean, like that little yellow rectangle down there, I'm pretty sure that's the, the layer count indicator. And so if we go to a board that definitely has more layers, yeah, see that rectangle is longer. So that would be because you'd have three digits next to each other instead of just two digits. And if you have two digits, then you have four layers. So, cause you'd have one, two, three, and four. Um, so yeah, that's why the memory support on this is weaker. Um, so this looks a lot like they took the B450 mortar and basically just upgraded the VRM, which I'm totally like that, that in my opinion is totally cool because the B450 mortar was solid and like all you could really change, like improve about it in my opinion was the VRM and looks like that's what they did. They obviously also added two and a half gig real tech LAN, BIOS flashback, which actually you already had on the B450 boards. I wish there was more USB ports in the rear I.O. <laughs> I do wish there was more of those, but not at the same time, obviously, I'm a bit of a USB port. Um, wait, they, they, but they don't have a 3.0 internal. Oh, no, that's there. It's right angled. Okay. But, uh, yeah, so I, I'm obviously a bit of a, like, ma like I, I just use too many USB ports compared to most people. But, yeah, so this looks solid. This definitely looks like a, a good MATX option. And how's the price? 160 and the Wi-Fi version is 170. Mm. Like it's a big upgrade on the VRM. Like big upgrade. Because even the heatsink is like you've got a bigger heatsink, better power stages, more, more, well, well, you've gone literally from discrete MOSFETs to power stages. So like that's, that's a big change. Um... So yeah, I I rather like this. They've also added an SOC VRM heatsink. Um, you actually have a PCIe slot layout where you can have a triple slot GPU as well as like a capture card potentially, or you know whatever other X like X4 uh, device you want, and then still have like you still have two M.2 slots. Like I, I like this board. I I do like I I still like I all like I like the B450 version and I think with B550 that like this looks a lot like the B450 version so except that they've upgraded the VRM and it's just like well I mean not really anything for me to complain about except maybe the price point but I like the thing is most of the good B MATX motherboards that I've seen so far were roughly around $159 anyway like also anyway so it's like you know, it's not like it ha like there's better options out there, any uh, better options out there. So yeah, there's, I don't really see a problem with this. It's a cool like it's a cool board. And then the cheapest board they have for now is the B550-A Pro. 
So what do we have here? Massive VRM heatsink again. I'm assuming this is on the same VRM as the Pro? I mean, as the Mortar? Did I scroll past the VR power delivery section again? No, but... Yeah, no, I didn't scroll past it, but where is it? But it's not here. <laughs> okay. But that does look like the exact same VRM that they have on the mortar boards, right? Like, one, two, three, four. Yeah, that looks like the same VRM. Solid-looking heatsink. Actually, no, this looks more substantial. Actually, this might be on discrete MOSFETs. How cheap is this? Oh, that's 140. It's not actually that cheap. You get troubleshooting LEDs, which is nice. This might be on the same VRM that they had for like the X47 or a similar VRM to what they ran on the X470 Gaming Pro Carbon, which was a solid VRM actually. Um, like, surprisingly solid. Like, I was expecting it to do a lot worse than it did, and it actually ran pretty damn cool. Um, yeah, four-layer four layer PCB, so the memory overclocking is going to be a bit weaker, but, you know, still, like, if you're running two DIMMs, it's actually going to be solid. Oh, 4,800 on this. I guess since this is ATX, they have more space for a better memory layout than the MATX boards. Or the... Or actually, this just has a more up-to-date, uh, more up-to-date specifications page. That's also a chance, because, like, here it says 4400, and then here it says 4800, and then if we look at the mortar specs, right, like, we see the same kind, well, we see 4400 here, but 4400 there as well, and so it looks like this one got updated to be 4800 now, whereas this one's still stuck on 4400 for both of those. But, um... Actually, this so this actually looks solid as well. Like, MSI hasn't really put out any board that, you know, I, I... Oh, wait, we don't have that on MSI's website. Why don't we have that on MSI's website? That's annoying. Yeah, so their, their website still isn't complete. I'm just going to reload it instead. And, well, in case, like, it's, it's like a problem with me having a cached version of the site, but I don't think that's the issue. Yeah, nope. Oh, maybe it's because I'm on the UK website. Can I just punch in US? Oh, awesome. Okay, I can just punch in US. B550. No, this is worse. <laughs> <laughs> they have even less boards over here. Okay, that's uh, that's exactly what I was was not hoping for. Okay, well that sucks. Um, so one twenty nine and one twenty five. These both have the same power delivery. Yeah, yeah, they do. Can't even see the inductors on that one. Which is actually a good thing. Like, sinking heat from the inductors works really well. Because the, the power stages themselves are actually relatively high thermal resistance. So if you can sink the heat through the power plane and into the inductor. And then from the inductor into the heat sink. That, that works quite well. Um, so this has slightly more... Like, this has a slightly higher surface area heat sink than what you get here. But, the, and the price difference... Man, that price difference is tiny. Right, that's like $4 right there. I'm not sure why you would go with the Pro V8, VDH. Like, just because the price difference is so small between the two boards, it doesn't really make a lot of sense to me. Um, oh, I see. So this one, like, this one... Oh, this one adds Wi-Fi. It's a really weird sort of, like, split between the boards in terms of feature set, in my opinion, but hey, whatever. And this looks like they literally took the B450 boards and replaced the inductors. <laughs> like, this is 
So where the, the, the B550 mortar looks like they took the B450 mortar and replaced the VRM section and added heat, like added bigger, better heat sinks. Um, this looks like they took the B450 mortar and did nothing. <laughs> so, well, I, it looks like they swapped the inductors and kept the MOSFETs. And I think the heat sink, the heat sink looks very similar. Um, so the heat sinks may be the same. Um, or similar enough that I can't tell much of a difference. So this is the closest to the B450 boards. And it is, like, quite a bit more expensive. Because if I remember correctly, the mortar was, like, 120 Well, no, it's, like, $10 more than the, the, the mortar, which was $120. If I remember... Actually, let's just look up what the B450 boards are supposed to cost, because I can't remember. I don't really keep like track or keep that great track of the the lower cost motherboard options. Just add those to the list, just to have like direct comparisons. Well, right now you know B four fifty motherboards are in short supply, but if we ignore the supply shortages, um, well, this is a problem because Newegg apparently doesn't carry this board anymore at all. Because normally. Um, like for other boards you should have a list of like alternative price points here and then well that 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 list is not there yeah well, like nope that's that's not what this board is supposed to cost at all that is way overpriced okay so this is 116 for the Oh, okay, no, so they haven't really changed the price very much at all. Like, they've basically bumped it up by probably, like, $10, considering that the ATX Tomahawk, according to, to Newegg, is supposed to be 116 um, or 117 Like, still, that's, that's not close enough to $120. I'm assuming the MATX boards were basically the same price um, as the ATX board, because they were very similar in terms of sort of... Well, actually, in, in some ways, the MATX boards are actually better. Like the mortar titanium, uh, like the mortar, uh, no, not that. Like the mortar is actually, in my opinion, a better board than the Tomahawk, mostly for the rear I.O. Um, damn it, stay. There we go. Yeah, actually, this still has better rear I.O. than the new mortar. Doesn't it? That's uh, IC7 USB ports. This has six. In my book, that is better. <laughs> So, and then compared to, like, uh, the B550M, let's just go to the rear I.O. Yeah, and this has five. So they've literally cut down on the number of USB ports. Why on earth would you do that? Um, so I'm not a fan of that decision, but, yeah, okay, well... Still, it doesn't look like they've significantly upped the price points for the for the boards. And this actually looks like... Like, this looks surprisingly okay. Um, it's just, like, I don't get why you'd get it considering that the... the, the, the like, the... The more... Uh, the bazooka is... That's a hor... Like, these board names are terrible. <laughs> like, they're just so ridiculous. Like, freaking... <laughs> oh, well, at least they didn't name a motherboard grenade. Like, that, that would just be, like, like, because especially if the board had, like, a bad VRM, like, <laughs> that would just be absolutely, like, I, like, yeah. Anyway, um, so, MSI's naming scheme aside, yeah, like, this is so similarly priced to the Pro VHD, I don't get why you'd get this instead. Or VDH. So, yeah, that's the that's the MSI B five B five fifty lineup. It's uh, like there's nothing really wrong with it. There's also not like it's not that exciting in my opinion in any way. Um, I mean the the MATX boards look solid. The Gaming Edge Wi Fi and the the Tomahawk look really cool. The Carbon looks kind of like I'm not sure, like I'm not sure why I'd recommend somebody to get the Carbon. And the Gaming Edge Wi-Fi ITX is like, I'm pretty sure you could get a better ITX board. Um, or like a slightly better ITX board at the same price. 
Um, oh, and the B550A Pro actually looks okay. Like, yeah, th this looks okay. I, it's just, like, I'm surprised that, like, the thing is, I'm pretty sure MSI, like, has even cheaper boards that they haven't released yet. Like, there's going to be even cheaper B550 motherboards. Because, uh, like, we've already seen, like, ASRock already released, like, a 170 or $180 uh, B550 board. Um, and admittedly, it has, like, no VRM heat sinks. It's just generally terrible in all ways. But, hey, if you're going to be overclocking a 3300X, it should actually, like, if you're, or even just not overclocking a 3300X, right? That's always an option. People run their systems at stock. Uh, if you're on a 3300X, like, that should be perfectly fine. Um, so, yeah, that's, uh, it's kind of that. That's it for this video. So, that's, that's MSI's B550 lineup for, for now. I'm, I'm still annoyed that their website isn't complete, because I know for a fact that there's more webs, uh, there's more boards that are missing here. And we know this because, like, we have this thing, right? This isn't on MSI's website right now. Um, but, yeah, their, their lineup, like, like, basically, so since this is the last video for, for B550 sort of first impressions that I've done, like, at this point, I can confidently say B550 is, like, there are too many good motherboards. Like, it's going to be really, really hard to sort of, for, like, because obviously I'm going to be doing a Gamers Nexus Roundup video for B550, and I, I can already see, like, there's going to be... Like, I'm going to have a hard time choosing boards. <laughs> like, I'm going to have a really hard time choosing boards. So, yeah. At the same time, I think MSI has the least exciting lineup, in my opinion, from what I've seen so far. Like, none of these are particular... Like, there's nothing really wrong with any of these boards, but at the same time, I, I don't feel like... Like, you get solid VRMs on a lot of them, and I think for MATX, actually, MSI has some of the... D d seems to have some of the better power delivery out there um though like asus also is doing some some pretty nice uh matx boards um and also some really terrible ones <laughs> but uh whereas msi doesn't seem to manage to like msi doesn't have any really terrible ones so yeah so that like it, it'll be interesting um but uh yeah, like, that, that's it for the video. So I guess, uh, I, thanks for watching. Like, share, subscribe, leave any comments, questions, suggestions down in the comment section below. If you'd like to support what I do here with actually hardcore overclocking, I have a Patreon where you can support me directly. There's a link to that down in the description below. And there's also the AHOC, AHOC Teespring store where you can pick up shirts, stickers, posters, you know, the usual YouTuber merch. And both of those help immensely with running the channel, so... Yeah, if, if you, you know, consider them, that would be much appreciated. And uh, that's it for the video. So thanks for watching and goodbye.